Just a little video update tonight. Um, and this is a six month review of these uh, Doc Martens made in England, Oxblood. Um, I have already featured these, but that was in a side by side comparison with some sort of air. So I thought for this video, it'd just be focusing in on these particular boots, talking about them, and maybe going into a little bit more detail than I have previously. So for the benefit of viewers who haven't watched earlier videos, I've worn these boots for about six months. Um, I have worn them in circulation with other boots, but I've been using these for work, the walk to work, and I reckon these are probably done 220 miles. So they've had a fair old wear in that, that six months. And I thought it was probably time just to reflect on how they're built, um, whether these uh, represent good value, whether these represent a good boot from Doc Martens, because I've had some problems with their outsource boots. Um, they're made in China, they're Vietnamese boots, had a couple of boots fail on me, so I really wanted to share how I'd found these boots and share some thoughts about whether they're worth the extra money. So these come in at about £179, so they are a premium boot from Doc Martens. So to cut a long story short, um, I have found these to be a much better quality, uh, which is really pleasing because this is a made in England boot. Um, this is probably the, the sort of the last hopeful Doc Martens because they've constantly cut their qualities and outsourced their product. So it is pleasing to report that these are a, a fairly decent standard. That's not to say they're perfect. Um, there are a few things which we'll get into where, you know, there's quality control issues, or longevity issues with, with the soles, um, but nice leather, nice quality, simple and robust build. Um, very much the the build quality it seems of the boots in the 90s which made them famous um, a gentleman called rose anvil um, absolutely fantastic leather worker very knowledgeable person he's dissected uh, both made england boots and the 90s boots uh, which he bought sort of old stock on ebay and they're built very very similar so reliant on a very simple felt midsole um, so quite interesting just to see that these do still maintain that sort of late 90s, early 90s sort of heritage, um, and they're built the same. So if you want to have old school Doc Martens, definitely made in England. One thing I would say um, is be careful with the sizing because whilst um, I feel that I know Doc Martens boots, I've had half a dozen pairs at least in the last few years, um, these are by far the narrowest last. Um, normally I go true to size and wouldn't worry at all about size on Doc Martens. Um, these have been quite hard to break into the point where they're truly comfortable. Breaking in to be able to wear all day, absolutely no problem at all, but the width has been uh, a bit of a slog to get uh, truly comfortable. Um, still I can't wear these with a thick sock. I would maybe have considered sizing up on these, but unfortunately Doc Martens don't do half sizes and I'm reluctant to size up a full size. But let's get into some detail and I'll show you around the boots and share some thoughts. Okay, coming in for some close-ups and really looking at these boots in some detail. Um, before we get into how these are worn, um, there's a couple of quality control issues which uh, bothered me a little, certainly when I first picked these up. Um, on the sole, the way they've finished, um, there's a little bit of a sort of a, a sort of wobble right in the edge and a slight bit of uh, undercutting where the sort of the the, the edges aren't quite true. Um, I think after some reflection, I think that's probably just sort of um, part and parcel to the sort of handmade aesthetic on these. Um, the little wobble does sort of mirror the, the stitching detail there, so it's where the, the machine tracks around. Um, not particularly attractive and a little bit uh, disappointing in terms of the, the sort of fit and finish and the quality control. But uh, yeah, that's just something I've observed with these. Um, but starting off with the sole, um, with Doc Martens in general, the, the main point of uh, failure or uh, issue I have is the longevity of the soles. I had hoped that these made in England shoes would, would have a better, uh, longer wearing sole. Um, but in fact, if anything, and well, actually without doubt, these have a, a sole which is a shorter life uh, than any other Doc Martin boot that I've tried. The uh, the Outsource Classics, the Hard Life, the Four Life before that, 
um, all had much more uh, longevity in the sole. So with these very soft rubber, and I have actually tested it with a gyrometer tester, um, very shallow uh, tread pattern, and also very narrow sort of bars. So within a couple of weeks of wearing these, were sort of, the bars were kicking off and the first flat spot was forming there on the heel, uh, where I, uh, I've, I've always said overpronate. In fact, I think it's underpronation or supination, I think it is uh, quite a big sort of impact on the, uh, the heel there. So for me, these, these really do offer a very short life. So this is six months in rotation. The flat spot there is pretty huge. Um, Nowhere near wearing through to the uh, the cells, the air the air cells below, but again, a little bit disappointing. And I do wish Doc Martens would sort out their their sole design. Moving up the boot, obviously you've got uh, the traditional yellow uh, stitched welt, all very sort of normal, fairly good quality and construction there. And then you get onto the rather lovely uh, Quillian leather. Um, this is a corrected leather. Um, it is sort of a coated leather, which, which I do struggle with a bit. Um, I've always believed that the uh, Dot Martens uh, Wonder Balsam was the product to use, but on reflection, I just can't get it soaking. It really doesn't do much good. So it can maintain a sort of a, a waterproof sort of shine, but it doesn't do much to soften the, this leather. Um, so I'd love to have your suggestions on what would be a good uh, product to use on this, something which would get into the into the grain of the leather, actually make it a little bit softer, and look after it a bit more. Um, with this corrected leather, you do get sort of a almost a plasticky coating. Um, aesthetically, there you see on the on the toe where the, the main creasing occurs. That finish has sort of worn off or sort of cracked away. Uh, it's not a split. It is purely aesthetic. I think where the where the coating is uh, is failing on there, um, but again, a little bit uh, disappointing. Um, but I think part and parcel of this product and certainly this colourway is not very forgiving. Moving up the boot, the stitching's fine. All the qualities are there. Um, no real quality control issues about how the boots put together. Mainly down to the the sole down there, the material of the sole, and some of the finishing on the sole. Um, inside the boots, I will show you uh, this boot. I've taken off the, uh, the laces, so you've got obviously a bellows tongue. Um, the tongue on these is critical to the break-in and comfort. Um, what I find is that until you've got that uh, tongue to conform with the, the shape of your uh, upper foot, your, your heel will not sit comfortably in the, in the heel cap. So the sooner you can break in that tongue, the, the quicker you're gonna have a comfortable boot, really. Um, so inside, you've got a very simple construction, uh, a sort of fiber insole, nothing more than that. A Little bit of a lined vamp, if you can see that on the front there. You can see the, the fiber fabric liner. Um, but apart from that, you've got the the fuzzy back of the Quillian leather, um, which I do quite like. Um, nice tight uh, fibres on that, so that's a good quality leather. Um, and I do like the fact that it's not dyed all the way through, and you've got that sort of that fuzzy feel to it, because it actually does remind you that this is actually, despite the the finishes on the outside here and all the corrections that have gone on, uh, this is still quite a good quality heavy leather, which is quite nice to be reminded of sometimes. Inside you've got the heel cap, uh, which is simply uh, a sort of fibre um, cap, or it might be corrected, or sort of engineered leather. Um, I don't particularly like it. I would prefer a sort of solid leather cap, something which would would break in and conform with your foot. Um, it does have slightly sharp edges, which can sort of nip your sort of heel when you're breaking it in. And I have had one of these, not on a made in England boot, um, but it's fractured on the inside, sort of become loose. Uh, so not uh, sort of a heel design I particularly like. Um, I much further sort of the the leather uh, heel caps you might find in uh, Red Wing boots, but again probably very faithful to the history of Doc Martens and how they're put together. Uh, up at the top, unfinished, 
um, but no issues there. Obviously the, the heel tab, um, yeah. One thing that I have found with Doc Martens is that the laces can be of appalling quality. These have held up pretty fine, uh, slightly sort of fluff, fluffy and worn, but uh, no breakages and uh, pretty serviceable overall. Okay, well that brings us to the end of the video. I hope that was useful. If you want to find out a bit more about these boots, um, their history, their relationship with Sol of Air, um, how they compare to Sol of Air, this is a pair of Sol of Air boots there, um, do check back on my channel because I've done quite a lot of coverage of those two brands and side-by-side uh, -side comparisons as well. Um, if you haven't seen my channel before, please check it out. Um, very much into quality footwear, uh, American heritage brands like Red Wing, um, formal boots like Herring and Barker from the UK, um, everyday carry, fountain pens, pen knives, bit of cycling, bit of running, bit of guitar. Um, check it out, we might share some other common interests. Of course, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hope that's helpful, and I'll see you for the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.